Hey, what is up YouTube? Welcome to today's video and finally I decided to go look at PoE Ninja and see the highest DPS build in the game and I was quite surprised. 15 billion DPS and as you can see here, this is kind of a similar version. This is done on Inquisitor and I think the person said the damage was around 2 bill or maybe 3 bill. So this is not exactly 15 bill. 15 bill is a little bit of an overstate but as you can see the damage is so high already that what's even a difference at that point you do have to do a little bit of manual dodging if you want to use this type of build for bossing however we're going to go over exactly why ice spear traps do so much damage we're going to go over exactly how much cheating there is in the profile and if you want to play this build in the future like you can see right here it absolutely shreds and yeah it's probably some of the fastest maven that i've ever seen now it's always interesting to see the highest DPS profile on PoE Ninja. Now, this doesn't always reflect what is the actual highest DPS build. It's just whatever shows up as the highest based on PoE Ninja settings. Now, a lot of that comes down to how much cheating there will be in the profile. A lot of people run too many auras or they use flash that won't be up for the whole fight. Now, PoE Ninja currently does not account for Crucible Trees. When I import over a profile from PoE Ninja and I import it into path of building i do not see the crucible tree for the weapon now highest dps is usually always going to be the same build you have the same culprits every single league and it is always armor stacker accuracy stacker some ice traps some ice spear traps bone shatter is also up there because of a bug in the setting with trauma and then there's also strength stacker with reeve and then sometimes you even see power siphon and then there's also one other build that i see quite oh cast on crit ice spear which is kind of similar to ice spear traps but as you can see all the builds are pretty much the same thing every single time now you might be wondering why is this person playing ice spear traps what makes ice spear traps so amazing and these are the two the, the same people i think they have near identical gear now if you change your name you actually appear twice on poe ninja it's something really interesting but as you can see, he's playing Ice Spear Traps. Now, what is so great about Ice Spear Traps? So traps have really, really high damage multipliers. So you see this one has increased trap throwing speed. So this is the trap support gem that allows you to use Ice Spear and trap. Then you have charge traps, which grants you crit multi per power charge per when used by traps. And then it also grants you increased trap damage and then trap throwing speed. And it allows you to also get power and frenzy charges. And now we also have Divergent Trap and Mind Damage Support. This is just a really, really good multiplier. As you can see here, it is 50% more Trap and Mind Damage, making it one of the best, uh, what's it called, support gems. Awakened Elemental Focus is used over here. You'll immediately see something wrong, is that this profile is probably fake because they're using Heat Shiver with Elemental Focus, which makes zero sense. Now, Elemental Focus is a 40% more damage multiplier, Divergent Power Charge on Crit is 4% more damage per power charge so it's another 40% more damage multiplier with around 10 power charges which this person has now ice spear has a very very interesting thing on poe ninja is when you import over the profile you will see that ice spear gets counted as second form in all projectiles so what that means is that ice spear takes into account the shotgunning aspect and the fact that you get 100% crit or more crit chance because it's at the second form. So normally you have first form all projectiles or second form all projectiles. And when you import over the path of building config, it gives you second form all projectiles. So you're able to scale to scale with your projectile number. And it also gets inherently high crit chance. Now trap throwing speed is something else that helps the builds tremendously with scaling damage. It turns traps into almost a sort of attack skill in the sense that you can scale your attack speed or cast speed. Now we're able to get cast speed for trap throw speed with Architect's Hand. These makes it so that increases and reductions of cast speed also apply to trap throwing speed. So when you take this uh, pair of gloves off, you can see the damage goes down to 7 billion, which is still a lot. Now Ice Trap is also a cold elemental skill and is very important when you're trying to scale your damage to have a cold skill or elemental skill or any type of elemental skill because this allows you to use these jewels that have elemental tags on them so you can see right here it has crit multi of cold skills this one right here is also crit multi of cold skills crit multi of elemental skills and crit multi of cold skills and this allows you to get your crit multi to obscene levels like 884 percent is a crazy crazy amount 
Now, this person plays Ascendant. I'm not really sure if Ascendant is the best. Saboteur kind of got nerfed a lot for traps specifically. But what Ascendant does is it gives you more skill points, which allows you to get more jewel sockets, which is more crit multi. And then you also get power and frenzy charge with unleashed potential, which is another more multiplier. And lastly, if you look at it right here, this build does use curses to scale its damage. So this extra curse is a 72.7% damage increase. And then Deadeye gives you additional projectile. And then Tailwind also grants you a faster trap throwing speed. Slightly, you'll see right here, 0.12 from 0.13. So Deadeye is not that bad. And then lastly, they're st stealing this node with Forbidden Jewels for the extra Frenzy, Power, and Endurance Charge. So overall, very, very well scaling skill with a lot of different multipliers working for itself. Now, if you ever want to see how a build scales all its damage, it will always be with Cluster Jewels. Cluster Jewels are the name of the game. And if you're playing a projectile build, but medium clusters are insane. So this build utilizes three voices. So it's passing out to the voices. And this guy is not really mid-max because he has three passive point voices. So he could use one passive and save a skill point. Now, he's using three different type of medium clusters. And these are the ones that you should always look out for. If you're playing a projectile build, eye to eye repeater is unbeatable. Gives you 30% projectile damage and 8% attacking Caspi. And that Caspi gets scaled for trap and throw speed. Or trap throwing speed. And then eye to eye is just 20 plus 30, which is 60% damage. Projectile damage. Now, next up, they use um, some trap medium cluster jewels and... A trap medium clusters grants you crit multi with traps, and it also grants you pen, which is super, super useful. Penetration is key. Now, Gorilla Tactics is another really, really good notable. He's a bunch of trap damage. He gives you trap throwing speed too. So another very, very high efficiency cluster. And usually if you're running any heralds, people always run Purposeful Harbinger. And the reason behind this is that Purposeful Harbinger gives you 40% aura effect. And then most builds will always scale auras to try to get as much aura effect as possible. And Her Purposeful Harbinger and Empowered Envoy just gives a crazy amount of damage. Now, next up, we also have Pain Attunement. So this build does take Pain Attunement for another 30% more damage multiplier. And then we also have Inner Conviction here. And this is when we start seeing a lot of the cheating. Is that this build doesn't really have any way to gain Frenzy Charges. Usually when you use Inner Conviction... You use a minimum frenzy charge of Grand Spectrum or something like that in order to get it. But in this case, this build does grant it, uh, what's it called, power and frenzy charges. And this is just not true. But this node does give you 29.8%. It gives you 3% more spell damage per power charge. And then you also get some devotion over here from increased effect of non-curse auras and elemental damage. Now... Curse effect is another thing that you'll see here. This build does use utilize three curses, which is Frostbite, Elemental Weakness, and Sniper's Mark, which are all absolutely crazy. So it gets one curse from the Ascendancy, another curse from Whispers of Doom, and you do see that this person does prioritize curse effect. So you have Steeped in the Profane here. There's some curse effect nodes over here that he takes. And then lastly, there's more curse effect over here, Malicious Intent. And also gives you plus level of curse skill gems. And just to see exactly how crazy curses are for this build. If you turn off elemental weakness, the damage goes down to 9 million. You turn off frostbite, it goes down a lot more, 6.6. .6. And then you turn off sniper's mark. And the damage is all the way down to 3.9 bill, which is still a lot. But curses are absolutely key for scaling damage. And it does give you a lot of that necessary penetration that you will otherwise lack. Now, next up, we have three extra power charges and frenzy charges on the build from the tree. So you can see here, he is anointing the power charge and he's taking the power charge here, power charge here, and the frenzy charge there. And overall, all these jewel sockets are pretty much being used for all of these uh, rare jewels that gives like double crit multi or triple crit multi. And that allows him to get to a 800 or 900% crit multi. Now for the items, these are pretty common items that most people use. You have Annihilating Light, which is just triple damage, unbeatable. In fact, unless you're using like maybe double mirror scepters or something like that, but very, very cost efficient item. And then you have Heat Shiver. Now, Heat Shiver is kind of interesting here. This doesn't really get calculated on pop. You'll see right here, the enemy doesn't get any chill effect and it doesn't get frozen. So theoretically, this guy is trying to cheat, but 
23 billion, right? But you don't really get that when you import the config over. Now, Ashes of the Star and Diala's is mainly used for the quality bonus. So you can see right here, you get 30% quality of all skill gems and then another 30% quality. And then right here, you can see that they are putting in Enhance in their body armor. So you have level 5 Enhance. This is in a red sock, so it gives you 56% quality. And what this does is it allows your Divergent Berserk. Now, Divergent Berserk grants 5% more spell damage at 20% quality. And since we're getting all this quality Berserk, which is usually mainly for attack-based builds, now is crazy for spell builds. Now, this was something that was popular in the past before they nerfed it. So you can see here, Divergent Berserk actually gives you 34% hit damage, which is crazy. Now, Righteous Fire is the same case, 54.5%. I think Herald of Thunder also grants a loads of DPS. And a Sniper's Mark quality is 5% increased damage taken. You un take Sniper's Mark is 67.5% damage loss. So overall, you can see that that quality bonus for scaling the quality of your skill gems, your curses, makes a huge, huge difference in terms of damage. And that's why they use Ashes and Diala's. Now the rings are just nuts. I think it's a mirror ring, right? This thing is a power charge. Spell damage for power charge, crit multi, cast speed to scale your trap throwing speed. And then he crafted it with a crit multi essence. If you take off the rings, you can see right here that it loses a sizable chunk of damage because of all the power charge scaling. Now, a lot of people will be wondering why are they using a micro distillery belt? Now, flasks are the name of the game. Flask effect is absolutely crazy. You turn off the flask, bottle fave, you don't have 100% crit chance anymore. And you don't have the 10% increased damage taken multiplier. And then cast speed on the silver flask gives you more trap throwing speed. And then dying sun, the additional projectiles at scale with the flask effect is huge. So you lose a lot of shotgun and you see all the damage goes down. A starlight chalice does give you exposure. And exposure is great in terms of giving you more penetration. So you can see without any of the flask on, the damage actually goes down from 14 to like 4.9 bill. Now, one more item here that he runs that's a big cheating item is March of the Legion. So what March of the Legion does is that you can easily corrupt it for plus 4. And it also has plus 4 by itself. So you have plus 8 to your auras. Now, you have to run these auras by using Divine Blessing. And the way Divine Blessing works is you can only have one aura at a time. So you'll see here that the best way to scale any damage on your PoE Ninja build is with auras and flasks and flask effect scaling is huge. So for bossing, for instance, for any boss with multiple phases, when you use the enkindling orb for unique flask for gain no charges during effect, you will not have your flask up for the, the second phase of the fight. However, you're doing a boss like Searing Exarch or Eater of Worlds, you will have the flash charges. Now, like I said, all of this is extreme amounts of cheating. Now the auras you can see right here, negative 43% on the life reservation and negative 10% on the mana reservation. And it doesn't just stop there. All these auras in the boots get counted for the damage. However, you will never be able to divine blessing off the auras. Now smite is okay because you can smite manually, but you can't be running hatred, zealotry, and anger at the same time. It's just not possible with divine blessing. So that's another part that is some huge cheating. Now, when you cheat on so many different aspects with the flask effect, with the frenzy charges, with the, what's it called? And also the auras, you will see that the damage will go probably all the way down to 3 or 4 billion. Now, that doesn't mean that this build is not going to one-shot everything in its sight. It just means that the damage is not actually going to be 10 billion. And you can see aspect of the spiders included. And maybe he doesn't run that. I and mean, then he has the right amount of auras, but then the boots are definitely a huge red flag. Now, the actual damage of this build is relatively overkill. Now, I did find this person showcasing, let's see, he does showcase a lot of this build and compares it to some other really high DPS builds. Now, this is 4 billion DPS in this showcase. He is using Eye of Winter. And I did make a video about this exact same build in 3.19, but like I said, there is a lot of different ways to build it. Now, Eye of Winter is also good. You can also use Ice Spear. So there's a lot of different choices. So this is Eye of Winter, but it's the exact same concept, more or less. And Uber, Cyrus just gets evaporated in one shot. 
Now, POE Ninja does not calculate chill effect or frozen enemy for Heat Shiver. Now, Heat Shiver is going to be the best, but you would have to switch out your gem link to not use Elemental Focus. Now, mapping for this build is obviously going to be awful. You're going to die to anything that breathes on you, but this is the ultimate boss killer build. Now, there are insane amounts of cheating with the auras, flask effect, inner conviction, and curse application. This is the uh, video I made before. Now, about uh, what's it called? Inner conviction or not? A curse application is that you'll see that you have elemental weakness frostbite, but the only way to really apply these curses are to cast it manually. And you'll see that in this video, most of the times, you're not going to spend all that time casting elemental weakness frostbite and sniper's mark on a boss. It's just unrealistic. But I do think one of the biggest takeaways for this video is that even if you are a spell build, you can take advantage of Berserk and Diversion Berserk specifically to get you a lot of move speed and a lot more damage. So you can see right here, the build actually has 191% move speed, which is pretty nuts, right? How does he have that much move speed? And the reason behind that is that Berserk is a huge, huge uh, quality of life in terms of movement speed and even attack speed and even damage for caster builds. But thanks for watching, everyone. And let me know down in the comments below if you ever played Ice Spear Mines for bossing. And the damage is truly absurd. Now, this is Eye of Winter. But look, Searing Exar is going to get evaporated in a six-man party once he's actually able to cast on top of it. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Divides, and Mage Bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye. Damn.